On the first day of your cruise, you should be bringing your bathing suit with you in your carry-on bag because it's one of the best times to enjoy the pools and water slides with few, if any, lines. This is one of many tips that you can really take advantage of on the first day of your cruise. We've got a whole list of them up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. There's nothing like the excitement of embarkation day. That cruise is finally here. After months or years of planning, your vacation is here and you're ready to get it off. But in order to have an amazing start to an even more amazing cruise, taking advantage of certain tips and tricks is going to ensure that you have the best possible start to your cruise. Starting with number one, make sure you have all your paperwork with you. This seems like an obvious one, but you'd be surprised how often this gets messed up. It's your responsibility to arrive at the cruise terminal with the proper documentation, your passport, birth certificate, state issued ID, whatever that you need to go on this cruise, make sure you have it with you and on your person, meaning don't put it in your checked luggage. This is a very common mistake where people put their passports in their checked luggage and then it goes onto the ship and then they go to the check-in process and don't have it. So make sure you have it with you on your person. That is super important. Obviously beyond that, make sure you pack in the first place and make sure it's up to date and not gonna expire anytime soon. Next up is make sure you adhere to your arrival time. When you do the online check-in for your Royal Caribbean cruise, you can get check-in for your sailing at a particular time. Now this check-in is when you check into the pier, not when you actually board the ship, but I digress. Anyway, make sure you arrive exactly at that time. Now, if you're late because of a travel delay or you really needed that Starbucks drink to get your day started, no worries at all, they'll still take you, but try to arrive exactly at your time. That is super important. It's one of the new things that Royal Caribbean has in there, and it's a good idea to adhere to. Next, make sure you give the porters your large suitcases. I'm always amazed by people who bring their own suitcases on board the ship and then lug them around until your cabin is ready. Remember, your cabin may not be ready to go into until about 1 or 1.30, heck, sometimes even 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And people that get there on board the ship around 11 will have to lug their luggage around, literally, until their cabins are ready. Now, I'm not sure why some people don't check their luggage. Maybe they're unaware of the porter services, or they assume it costs money. Technically, the porter services cost nothing, but you are supposed to tip them a dollar or two. Regardless, that's like so worth the cost in my opinion, but having to take all your luggage around in order to save a couple dollars is totally not worth it. Keep your hands free and be able to enjoy those first few hours on board without your luggage. That being said, don't give over your carry-on bag. You're gonna wanna make sure your valuables, passports, cash, that's with you in a carry-on bag. So don't give that to the porters, just give them your big luggage. There are a few things you might want to bring on Embarkation Day with you that Royal Caribbean allows because you're allowed to bring one bottle of wine or champagne per adult in your cabin on Embarkation Day. In addition, you can bring up to 12 standard cans, bottles, or cartons of non-alcoholic beverages like soda or water per stateroom on Embarkation Day as well. Make sure you keep these beverages with you in the cruise terminal instead of putting them in the luggage you give to the porters because the problem is if you give it to the porters and it goes in those bags, those bags are going through the x-ray machine. And the x-ray machine is gonna see a bottle and they can't tell in the x-ray if it's alcohol, which is banned, or a bottle of wine, which is allowed, and then your bags will be flagged and held back. And long story short, it's gonna delay your bags getting to your cabin. So don't do that. Next up, when you get on board the ship, do your e-muster drill as early as you can. Instead of going to the old days of going to your muster station and standing around and waiting for the muster drill, those days are gone. Instead, Royal Caribbean's e-muster is so easy and convenient. So be sure to complete all three steps early in the day once you get on board the ship. The first two steps are to watch a safety video and hear the ship's alarm in the Royal Caribbean app are easy to do, and you can actually do that the day of your cruise before you ever step on foot on the ship. The app will allow you to start doing the safety briefing that morning. So when you're in your hotel room or on your way to the cruise port, play that video, play the sound. That way, when you get on board the ship, all you need to do is make a quick detour over to your muster station, have them check you in, and you're done, that's it. Don't lollygag around it, do it sooner. This next tip may change sometime in 2024 based on what we're hearing from Royal Caribbean, but in the meantime, if you have a dining package, make sure you make reservations as soon as you get on board the ship to ensure you can select the restaurants and dining times that work best for you. You don't have to visit every individual restaurant to make a reservation. In fact, a lot of times on the Royal Promenade or in the Centrum, you're going to find a crew member who's standing in front of a desk who can make specialty dining reservations. Go to that person, have them make all the reservations. 
The reason why you want to make especially dining reservations in advance, especially if you have a dining package, is times get booked up quickly. So do that on embarkation day. I would argue that when you get on board the ship, you should go to your muster station drill, go to the wind jammer for lunch, and then do specialty dining reservations, get that taken care of immediately. Once your cabin is ready, it's a really good idea to go to your room for a couple of reasons. First of all, you probably have some stuff with you that you wanna drop off, right? You're not gonna need your wallet anymore, your keys, and of course, any carry-on bags you brought with you, you're gonna wanna put away, put that in your safe. It's also a really good idea when you get to your cabin early is to make sure that everything is exactly as you expected it. Make sure everything works exactly the way you want it. And if there are any maintenance issues, you wanna get those addressed immediately and of course, you can meet your stateroom attendant, set up your preferences for when they're gonna service your cabin. Remember, Royal Caribbean comes once a day to service your cabin and it's your choice if you want the morning or evening service. So this is a really good opportunity to meet them and get that situated. But I like going to your cabin to make sure that everything is essentially the way you expect it. That way, if there are any issues, get the maintenance team over there sooner than later. That way there's no surprises later in the day. If you have kids, make sure you go to Adventure Ocean to register them on the first day. Almost always, Adventure Ocean opens at 1 p.m. for registration. Going to registration basically means two things. One, you get to sign your kids up and fill out some paperwork. But two, and I would argue more importantly, your kids get to see the venue and meet the counselors. For a lot of kids, it can be a little intimidating going to Adventure Ocean, not sure what to expect in terms of what Kids Club is, but going to Adventure Ocean there on the open house time ensures that they get a little more acclimated with it and you get to ensure that you'll be able to just simply drop them off later in the evening. Adventure Ocean will open at probably 7 or 8 p.m. on the first day of your cruise. It depends on the ship. I'm not sure why there's a discrepancy, but there is on the first day. Anyway, when you go to drop them off, there's no paperwork to do. You just simply drop them off, sign them in, and you're good to go. Something else I recommend doing on Embarkation Day is exploring your cruise ship. No matter how many times you watch one of our awesome walkthrough videos here on our YouTube channel, by the way, we do have a lot of walkthrough videos, full ship tours of Royal Caribbean cruise ships. I appreciate you watching them as all, but there's nothing like seeing it for yourself. So do yourself a favor and walk around and see where everything is. Get a lay of the land and an understanding of essentially where everything is located and get your bearings for the rest of the cruise. It's a really fun way to to check out everything there is, maybe discover some new places that you wanna go later on in the cruise. Another really good activity on the first day of the cruise is to go to the spa and fitness center and take a tour of those facilities. Royal Caribbean offers complimentary tours of the spa on embarkation day. To be fair, you can get the spa tour any day, but on embarkation day, it's the traditional time in which most people go. And the spa tours are actually a really cool thing to do, whether or not you actually wanna go get a massage service, that's okay too. It's pretty low sales pressure, they're simply going to show you around, and at the end, you have the opportunity to book something. If not, no worries. They're pretty cool about it. But I do recommend checking it out because it's a neat space, and it's actually really pretty, and you never know whether you want to book something, but do that on Embarkation Day. It's a good activity to check out. We're about eight minutes into this video, and so far, I've told you about all these things you should do. Make sure you do this, 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 and this. Also, take some time to relax. Get an Embarkation Day drink because, after all, this is supposed to be vacation, right? So grab a tropical cocktail by the pool, Sit down, enjoy the view, and get your vacation started off right. If you have a drink package, probably included. If not, you can always order drinks individually. This is also a really good opportunity with your drink to maybe go find the best sailway spot for later in the cruise. Every Royal Caribbean cruise ship has a kind of different layout and design, especially among the different classes. So it's a good idea to scope out the best sailway spot on embarkation day. If you're wondering, here are my favorite spots for sailway on any Royal Caribbean cruise ship. If you're on a Vision class ship, deck 10 forward. You're on a Radiance, Voyager, or Freedom Class cruise ship, the helipad at the very front is by far the best spot. Quantum and Oasis class ships, the Solarium Bridge Wings are limited but are amazing. And if you're on an Icon class cruise ship, go up to the Aquadome for an awesome view up there. I also really recommend unpacking on the first day of your cruise. Sure, you can live out of your suitcase for the duration of your cruise, but it's actually a lot easier and more convenient to have everything put away. Now on a three or four night cruise, I get it. It can be a little difficult to do that or kind of cumbersome, but actually unpacking is a really good idea. First of all, your clothing will be less wrinkled. Second of all, it makes it a little more convenient. Third of all, there's plenty of drawer space you're gonna find for your clothes and belongings on your Royal Caribbean cruise. You're gonna find not only drawers, but also look for a closet in which you can put more stuff in there. Don't forget with any suitcases that you have, you can store them underneath your bed. They can fit under there, no worries at all. Speaking of your luggage, you might be wondering where the heck is it? Because sometimes it can take a little while for your luggage to be delivered. Don't worry if it's not there exactly when your cabin is ready or shortly thereafter. Sometimes it takes a little more time 
for the luggage to get through the security system and then onto the ship, but it will be delivered to your cabin. However, if you get to about sail away time, and you're still missing a bag or more, then you definitely want to alert your cabin attendant. They can help track it down. In many cases, the bag gets delivered to the wrong side of the ship or the wrong deck. They will help you look for it. Worst case scenario, you go down and get services. A lot of reasons why bags don't get delivered to the rooms are either they're mislabeled, the label falls off, the luggage tag, of course, that you have fixed on there, they are made out of paper. Sometimes they do get ripped off accidentally. Or probably the most common reason, people put something in the bag that wasn't supposed to be there. If there's an item that Royal Caribbean confiscates or there's an issue and they see it in the x-ray machine, they'll withhold the bag and it's your duty to go down to security, usually on deck two and claim your bag. Now, usually security will call you and let you know that there's an issue, but if it gets to like five o'clock and you're still missing a bag, you might wanna head down to security or at least get services and try to figure out what's going on. Something else to do before your ship sets sail on embarkation day is take your seasickness medication. Whether you're taking tablets or you have a band to put on or a patch, this is the time to put it on, get it taken care of. There's no shame in taking seasickness medication. Nobody wants to be sick on their cruise. So it's a really good idea to make sure that you do this before your ship sets sail to ensure that you've got everything set for going forward. Also, before your ship sets sail, it's really important to help save money and put your phone into airplane mode. This is a major and common mistake. People leave their phones on, not just like on in general, but their cellular antennas on. And the problem is when your ship sets sail and gets a few miles off the coast, the ship's own cellular antenna gets activated. And that is not included with any cellular plan. And the problem with that is you can incur some major roaming charges. There are many stories of people going on a cruise, leaving their phone on, and then incurring like thousands of dollars in cell phone roaming charges. So what you wanna do is put your phone into airplane mode before your ship sets sail. It's really easy, depending if you have an iPhone or an Android or whatever phone you got there. It's usually a pretty simple task to hit a button and it disables your antenna, but you can still use your phone and of course the Wi-Fi, and that's totally cool, no issues at all. But make sure you know how to put your phone into airplane mode and connect to the ship's Wi-Fi so that maybe you can still be in contact with friends and family. I probably should have included this tip a little earlier in the video, but you should definitely have the Royal Caribbean app installed and downloaded on your phone before, heck, you even get on board the ship. But let's say it's embarkation day, you're watching this video because you're in your hotel room and excited, download the Royal Caribbean app now. The Royal Caribbean app is so helpful in order to make sure you have a list of daily activities, have access to your billing info, deck maps, and more. Having the Royal Caribbean app downloaded on your phone in preparation for the first day is a really good idea. Yes, you can still download it on board the ship for free, the problem is the speeds could be a little slow on it. So get it all set up ahead of time. That way, when you get on board the ship, you have it ready to go. Something else that's a really good idea on the first day is to look at the cruise compass. Now there's a printed compass you can get from guest services, or you can look in the Royal Caribbean app and see the list of activities that are available. There's a lot going on on the first day of the cruise. Certainly a lot of people are just hanging out and kind of getting their bearings, but there will be trivia events, there'll be entertainment, there's gonna be movies shown, there's gonna be parties. You wanna make sure you're up on it. You're not gonna have a case of FOMO for realizing later on, oh man, I could have gone to the Michael Jackson trivia that was happening at the Schooner Bar. So look at the app, see what's going on in there and make your plans early, especially because the first day is so busy, it's easy to overlook those things. And lastly, don't overlook the sail away party. Royal Caribbean cruise ships have a sail away party on the pool deck, assuming the weather's permitting, of course, otherwise they'll move it somewhere else. Anyway, the sail away party is a really fun celebration of the official start of the cruise. As your ship sets sail, there's gonna be a party with a DJ and music and dancing and all that. And not only is it a fun activity, especially for the kids or adults out there. I mean, my very good friend, Brian Cardi loves the wobble dance after all. So get out there and enjoy that. Plus with sail away, you get to see the scenery going past you. In many cases, you're sailing from a city and it's a really pretty opportunity. So don't miss the sail away party. There you have it, a look at all the embarkation day tips you should do on the first day of your cruise in 2024. Let me know in the comments below, what is your number one best tip for an awesome first day on a Royal Caribbean cruise? Looking forward to reading your comments over there. While you're down below our video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.